thank you very much. Oh, sorry. I just uh, still I, I said the reminder, but anyway. So uh, thank you very much for uh, for the kind invitation. And you know, this is the second time in my life that I'm invited for uh, to speak on a sustainability event. The other one is the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. They have a they have this presidential commission on sustainable development, and 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 uh, and and the chair of that commission heard me talking about healthcare, and he said. That, let's come and do the has part of it. So this, this is the second time, and the more I listen to these sustainability guys, or sustainable development guys, the, the more I understand that I have, very, uh, I have very much in common with your thinking. Uh, the number one thing, why, uh, uh, why uh, thinking about the sustainability of health and healthcare systems is that one-fifth, you know, one-fifth of humanity has access to healthy water and one-fifth of humanity has access to, uh, to universal health coverage, uh, even, if, even, even uh, if it is on a, on a minimal term. And the other stuff, that, and, I'm, and I was improvising on this tropical uh, tablet, so I was, I was bringing you thoughts about, uh, about, uh, about a, a mind map. And what I, what I did, this is sustainable health, and I, I took the seven challenges that I'm that I thinking are the most important. Number one, for example, being, the, uh, being uh, our own behavior. Uh, because what we, are doing, what we are doing is that we are pigging out and we are drinking and we have this consumer behavior. Uh, and you know, this is, this is the horn of the devil. So these are so the, so these vicious cycles that we are in. So we are just eating and drinking and, and, and we are looking to the advertisement. And this is not the Northern Hemisphere luxury anymore. Uh, this toxic behavior is exported to the southern hemisphere. Uh, and you know, there was this epidemiological uh, turn. And there are more people dying of, uh, of uh, lifestyle diseases or behavior-driven uh, diseases than, than from pandemics. And, you know, what we, and then we have very expensive uh, medical systems. We have hospitals, we have, we have pharmaceuticals, and we are researching pharmaceuticals, and, and then we are building hospitals, and the life cycle economy of a hospital is more, yeah, it's, it's, it's really expensive. Uh, and, and then we are just paving the way for, for the pandemics, because we, we are chronically ill, we are chronically, we are comorbid and chronically ill, so we are vulnerable to pandemics. Uh, so we're just paving the way for, for pandemics. Uh, and you know, that's, that's very inefficient, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, it, is, it is really, making our economies completely unsustainable. Then, uh, the next one is, uh, uh, next node in this mind map, and you know, these nodes are very important, because when, when I'm talking about li the lifestyle node, the next layer is human action, because we can regulate, and we can influence behavior, and we can change lifestyle. So, so this is, I'm, I'm just talking about the challenges, but there is a next layer to it, what can we do about it? You know, in, in Hungary, we are taxing added salt and sugar. We have this public health product tax, which is a, uh, which is a very nice use case. Uh, we, we, uh, we forbid smoking in public places, and, and we, uh, we regulate trans fat in the, in the food that is a very poisonous uh, material, and we did not even recognize it, it because it comes from the margarine even to the pizza, so we do not even think about it. So we regulate uh, the manufacturers, and we tax them to put incentives to to take salt out of the food and to take sugar out of the food. Uh, so there is an, an action layer uh, on this mind map. Then the environment and what we do with the environment. And that's me coming from Budapest in a, in a car, sitting myself in a car. Uh, and you know, that's, that's, I'm, I, I did not do too much harm, but in Budapest, the small particles that are leading to, uh, to, to lung cancer, uh, that, that is a, and and, and, and evidence is overwhelming that, that what we do with the environment uh, harms our health. Uh, so again, and that's uh, or even stress or the noise of the of the airplanes approaching over cities and, and then the cardiac disease uh, coming from that. So what we do with the uh, and, and what can we do with that? It's it's a it's a huge issue and and uh, and we we heard about it. And then the climate. Uh, and what we do with the climate. And these are the vectors. This is a very badly drawn bet. Uh, but you know, the bets are, are, are very important vectors. We, we learned it from COVID. But the hedgehogs, uh, so the, and, and, uh, the, the ecologists call it, say the hedgehogs. 
Is there a strategic action to collect bets? Is there a strategic sampling of bets? Is there a strategic sampling of hedgehogs? to see when the mutation happened with the, uh, with the usual suspects of vir uh, viral uh, factors. Uh, so, and, and this is the, this is the, uh, this is the uh, mosquitoes, and, and this is the, how do you say it? Tick, yeah. So the, and, and you know, with the environmental change, they come and bring diseases that we have never seen before. Uh, so that's... Uh, uh, so again, and then, then this is just, uh, it is not just COVID, but the next one and the next one, and, and, and we do not have systemic protection, uh, uh, protection responses, because if we collected them, we could, uh, we could give up, the, we could give the, uh, the, the viral samples to, uh, to, uh, to the vaccine developers. So we, we just, we are not organized uh, uh, to match these challenges. The, then the next one, and that's, uh, then, then it is demography. And you know, we are just getting older and older, and we do not move enough. Uh, so we are vulnerable to, for example, hip fracture. Uh, and when we look on the, when we look on this graph, uh, look on this graph, this is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, num you know, the, uh, so to say, uh, the cost of the uh, hip replacements, uh, or, and, you know, they should go up uh, with a much higher speed than we can afford to operate. And there is this, there is this uh, how to say, uh, hospital indebtedness, because we are spending more on hip replacements because we have to do it, and we cannot afford to do them. So, so the next step, and you know, uh, that's a huge issue, uh, is that, uh, sorry, I'm just losing the, yeah, yeah don't worry. Yeah. So, the next one, and I will come back to this issue, uh, the healthcare system itself. Uh, and I will come back to the, I will, I will come to the politics in a minute. Uh, you know, the, in the healthcare system, there are human resources that are, uh, that are working in healthcare systems, and there are structural issues in healthcare systems, because we, we tend to, uh, tend to uh, provide care in large central facilities and we transport people to large central facilities and they forget the community care, for example. But, and there is this uh, social marketing issue. How can we influence behavior? How can we, how can we do prevention? And also there is uh, the way we, can, we collect the money from people to pay for health, and those have incentives in it, and then the payment system uh, that, we, that we pay for services. And, you know, this, uh, and you know, given that we are just having a too large healthcare system, uh, that's a sustainability challenge uh, in itself. And then, the then, then comes a subcategory in, in here, you know, and that's the politicians. The politician is an animal. If you give nitrogen to them, uh, they will create votes out of it. Uh, so, they are, so they are vote maximizers, uh, forms of biological existence, uh, and, they, and they are also uh, very much risk averse. So they, uh, they do not necessarily work on the adaptational challenge to convince people not to have that hospital that does not have enough uh, clinicians. For example, in the, in the region, in the Chorna Hospital, they were operating breast cancer uh, without having a full-time radiologist and without having full-time pathologist. Uh, so, and, and you know, the, the community, because it was, uh, the, the Chorna Hospital was built on community donations. They did not want to give up the walls, so the hospital taught them. Uh, and you know, uh, why from much smaller amounts of money uh, you could do breast cancer screening campaigns through the, through the uh, maternal and child care nurses who access families. So this kind of, uh, this kind of political vote maximization and risk aversion, uh, you, just, you just fuel this uh, uh, sustain, uh, unsustainable uh, healthcare systems. And you know, you can, you can see it in this perverted political cycle. You know, there comes a new guy, and he has an idea that has to be different from the previous guy's idea, uh, because that did not work either. And then there comes, the, and, and, and he has to intervene into the system. 
He has to do it fast because the previous guy did not have too much time. Uh, so he has to do it fast. And, and in a political cycle, you do the tough things in the, in the beginning. So to have the short memory, forget it. Uh, so this, and, and then they have to leave because of a coalition, uh, whatever, or, or political cycle, or end of the mandate. And then there's a vacuum and disturbance uh, uh, left behind. Who goes, who stays, what goes, what stays. And then there comes a new guy and all that stuff. And when I, when I went to office back in 2010, uh, there were 12 uh, ministers of health before me. Uh, in, in Latvia, it's there close to 40 now. Since the system change in Latvia, there were more than 40 uh, uh, ministers of health in office. You just imagine that the life cycle of training medical uh, doctors, six years curriculum, and then specialization, and then socialization, and, and, the, and the good practice developments. It's a decade. But you know, when we are talking about the, the majority of patients is comorbid, lonely, aging people. And it is not the specialist care that we need. So the philosophy is teaching uh, having a 10-year life cycle, uh, while the health policy life cycle is average one or two years. So you just cannot implement the, uh, the al strategic alignment of healthcare systems and human resources uh, to the actual needs. So again, that's a, that's a huge, uh, that's a huge uh, uh, this perverted political health policy cycle is a huge challenge. So uh, altogether this policy cycle and altogether this uh, risk aversion and, uh, and vote maximization uh, will lead to uh, a, a very how to say, it's, it's, a, it's an overspending system. Uh, it's, it's too much in quadrat meters and, and, in, and in cubic meters that you, you will have to heat and, 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 and all that stuff. So, so that's, a, that's a consequence of the, of the sensitivity of health policy issues. And this is not just a Hungarian phenomenon. Uh, and you know, the, the, the huge issue is that how can you work on these challenges and how can you invest in uh, invest in efficient or sustainable care models. Uh, that's that's uh, the core uh, challenge in the in the sustainability of uh, of healthcare system. Now let's, uh, yeah, the health human resources I was talking about already, but the demography of health human resources is a huge issue. Aging, the the health, the health workforce is aging. Nurses, doctors, general practitioners, the average age of the diagnostic service providers, let, let it be pathology or, or imaging, radiology, uh, the average age was uh, over 62 four years ago. Uh, yeah, the publicly employed diagnosis, the average age is, is over 62. Then the migration of health labor force. There is this from east to the west and from uh, the south to the north migration. Uh, back in 2010, already 20% of the active medical population was working in EU countries. 20%. And that's not just a Hungarian phenomenon. It's, uh, it's a global issue. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, as I said, uh, they, their skill set is not necessarily aligned to the, to the social needs. Then the last one, uh, which is, a, which is quite, a, quite a complex in itself, is the data-driven health, uh, data-driven health and technology and innovation. Because the cost of innovation uh, is, is just, you just cannot pay for it. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and you know, the, uh, the way the data science develops and the way genomics and other omics, uh, proteomics and metabolomics are developing, uh, they, they enable us with more personalized care more targeted interventions, more targeted therapies. So uh, we had enough problems with the pharmaceutical industry and, and coping up with the new therapies. But imagine that you have to do it, uh, you have to cope with the economic consequences on a personal level. So this is, a, if, if pharma technology or biotechnology was a nuclear bomb, then this is the hydrogen bomb. Uh, and uh, the New Zealanders do not want to deal with it uh, anyway, so, they, 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 so the, this technology assessment uh, issue, they do not uh, follow these personalization trends. But what I mean is that we have to be able to control uh, this part of the, the developments, because what happens is that we are taxpayers, uh, and we are paying the, uh, the insurance contribution, and then 
from our body tissue, there are samples produced. And we are using, at, at the center as we have this AI production chain, and we are using uh, the cancer tissue of a patient, and we are using the, uh, the image, the cancer image uh, of a patient, and we are, uh, we are using those samples and we develop artificial intelligence. But if, and you know, we are doing it with doctors and nurses and assistants who are publicly paid from, from our tax money. Uh, and then, uh, then there, is, there will be an intellectual property uh, made out of it. And if it is done by uh, a data giant or, or a global uh, imaging company, then they will sell us back and we will pay for every imaging processing. So if, you know, I just wanted to show that, that somehow data and the data of our body tissue is a public asset in a way. It's, it's, a, it's a medication in if, if we are just looking on the potential of making the digital twins. So if we, if we are digital twins and, and acquire the same disease as you or, or vice versa, uh, then, then there can be a prediction or a prognostics that what would be the best therapy, what worked on you or what worked on me, might be working for you, so we will put you on the best track. But if we do not control that data, and they sort of uh, intellectual property propertize us, uh, then, then, then our biological existence is, uh, is, uh, is, is questioned in, 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 in large ways. So the, so the last uh, big challenge that I, that I mentioned is this data-driven health and, uh, and the digitization and the technological innovation. And you know, uh, you know this is, uh, uh, as I said, that uh, the next layer is human action. So I, I do, do not want to leave you without some recommendations. And this is my last, uh, this is my last chart. What should be done to make uh, healthcare systems and health more sustainable? Number one is that we have to manage patient pathways. Because if, if tenants has a problem, you should not go to the uh, National Institute if that can be done in a community healthcare center. So we have to cautiously manage patient pathways and treat whatever we can on the lowest possible uh, resource level. The second one is managing capacities. So we have to forget the hospital totem. And we have to manage and we always have to set the best capacities, the best sustainable capacities uh, to provide care. Uh, and you know, we have all the data, uh, we have all the business intelligence uh, that could be uh, built on it. The next one is uh, agile prevention. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you possibly remember, sorry to say, but, but if you remember back to 2010 and 14, we have this anti-smoking regulation, we have the public health product tax, we have the transit regulation, we have, we have all these, the, the Move Mama, we will, we will export that Move Mama campaign, Move Nadi campaign to West Prime, so it's, it's Move West Prime. We had these, uh, uh, the nights of the screening, and we have the screening tools, we, have a, we had a lot of, you know, the, the, the movement of the, uh, the, the nights of movement, not just uh, nights of sports activities, 7,000 people, uh, did, uh, did Zumba on the Hero Square. So you have to be agile uh, in, that, uh, in, in those uh, activities. Uh, and then you have to be able to manage this complexity. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, many people who, who try, to, uh, try to come close to manage healthcare system, they have this idealistic approach. But no, 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 they have to be able to understand, perceive, control, and manage uh, the complexities of uh, healthcare system. Uh, the next one is, yeah, in that, that they, they have to understand what does it mean to manage change. Uh, because they have to change the behavior of colleagues, the way they do health. They have to be able to change institutions. They have to understand organizational realities. Yeah, and, and they have to be able to influence uh, uh, behavior on population level or community level. And the last one is, uh, is uh, is that, yeah, we should not give in uh, to this short-sighted vote maximization and, and risk aversion. Uh, we have to tell people the truth. So if you, do, if you give birth to your child in a place where there are only one deliveries per week, you are in a huge, huge risk of malpractice. Uh, so you should, so there has to be a threshold in the number of deliveries for a, uh, for a community hospital. 
So no deliveries be below 500 deliveries per year because there is no practice and there is a huge risk. So we have to be able to explain people, otherwise we will serve the hospital totem and we will serve the fuel, the unsustainability of healthcare systems. Yeah, so that's, that's, a huge, that's an important message. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>